Hello and welcome to the In For A Penny podcast. I'm Mark Schoffman, a freelance personal finance journalist, and I'm joined by my financial planner friend, Joshua Gersler, who runs an advisory business called The Orchard Practice. Hello. If you'd like to know a little bit more about us, you can check me out at www.cavendishcontent.com and josh at www.topfs.co.uk. Each episode, we aim to give our perspective on the world of finance and money, and discuss some of the issues that crop up in business as well as everyday life. We hope that you'll learn something from our podcast as well as have some fun too. Thank you for downloading the latest episode of the Infra Penny podcast. Salut. Salut. How are you, Josh? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. How has your week been? Well, it's been a fortnight, I think, since we last recorded. So it could be a fortnight since someone last listened or they could just be listening as a like such is the benefit of podcasts. So, yeah, it's been all right, my fortnight. It's yeah? been good. Uh, tell me the highlights. The highlight was probably being named as one of the Vouch for Top Rated Advisors for 2020. Ah, did you see tough. that? I did see that. That was So that's uh, that's the Advisor Reviews website. Correct, yeah. yeah. That's an independent website where clients can go and leave reviews. Yeah. Um, we were also, well, I was also Top Rated Advisor 2019, so it's two years wow. in a row. Well done. Thank you. The pressure now is keeping it up though, isn't it? And also becoming top rated. Exactly, yeah. exactly. What do you have to do to get that? You have to get a certain amount of positive reviews from your clients. Yeah. Um, you don't know what your clients are going to say about you. You can ask them to leave a review. Yeah. Um, you get an email from Vouchful saying someone's left you a review. Are they your client? You say yes. Yeah. So it could be good, could be bad. You've got yeah. to take your chances, but luckily it was all good. So what rating did you get? You just get told you're a top rated advisor. Top rated. Yeah. So in so not just in Hertfordshire but in the UK. Correct. Okay. So we're talking in a week that or in a fortnight that um, the government has given its approval to HS2, yeah, the um, high speed railway from London to Birmingham. You'll be able to get between each place about fifteen minutes faster. Does that excite you? Doesn't excite me. I think it's great. Yeah. It doesn't excite me. Okay. How often did you go to Birmingham? I actually went last year for a conference. It was the first time I'd been in about five years. Did you feel it was too slow? It was a bit, actually. Yeah, I did it? get a bit of a slow train. Okay. Uh, also, they, the government's decided they're going to speed up the end of the sale of new petrol and diesel cars. Do you know what year that's going to end? If I had to guess, let's see if I remember correctly, 2035? 2035. Yeah, I read the article correctly. Good. So it was originally going to be 2040, and now it's going to be five years sooner. So we've still got 15 years. It's quite a long time. Years. 15 years of emissions. Yeah. yeah. If you think where you, where you were 15 years ago, your life has changed dramatically in that time. It has changed so dramatically. So 15 years is a long time. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about cars in this episode. Oh. Because I've been shopping around for one. Yeah. And because, uh, well, I think more my wife is concerned about the environment, becoming more environmentally friendly. So we've been looking at hybrid cars. Yeah. And... So obviously, when you are getting moving to a hybrid car, you're using less petrol and uh, fewer emissions. But I also thought it would save on car tax. You were wrong. It was wrong. So I I can see on your desk you've got a vehicle. Well, that's for actually my um, petrol polluting car. Okay. But we'll talk about that. But I thought we'd look at car tax and talk about what that means and what it's all about. And then I'll talk to you more about my car. Maybe that was my highlight. I'm getting a new car. Fantastic. Okay. So we're going to segue into. So what car are you getting? Mitsubishi Outlander FEV, FEV, which is a is acronym for something a hybrid electric vehicle. You're knowing what petroleum you're hybrid electric vehicle. Tr- okay, oh FEV as in PH. Yeah, so it does uh, 30 miles just on electric, which is good because you don't you doesn't save on petrol. Doesn't sound good, does it? Why? Just to go 30 miles only on the on the battery. Sounds a bit rubbish. Is it? Well, it's good if you're only doing small journeys, like just going to do a school drop off. Then I don't know wherever else I drive to. Arsenal. And also the other thing, other benefit is uh, that as we live in near London, is the low emission zone. So you can't drive into the centre of town now with your old diesel polluting engines. Yeah. Whereas you've got to pay a charge and that's being extended out to the North Circular, okay. which was another reason why a lot of people were looking at more envi- environmentally friendly vehicles. But I think they need to be wary about the road tax, which is why I wanted to talk about this. So the first thing I want to do is say road tax yeah. isn't actually called road tax, is it? Isn't it called vehicle excise vehicle duty? Vehicle excise duty. Yeah. So I'm going to, to do a quick quiz. I'd love it. I'd love it. When was, previously it was called road tax or vehicle tax. When was vehicle tax first introduced? In its current form? Yeah. Uh, 
1958. No. This is a bit where you give me what the actual answer is. Oh, 1888. 1888, was it? Yeah. For horse and carriage, was it? Well, possibly. It's been around for a while. Okay. But in 1920, it was updated to apply to specifically to motor vehicles. So I guess previously... Were there motor vehicles in 1888? No. In my mind, a... it was horse and cart. Yeah. Which is rhyming right. slang. Is it? Yeah. Well done. So now it goes into a fund uh, to the treasury. So people hear the word road tax, I think they assume it pays for your roads. Doesn't. Doesn't. No. Who pays for roads? Well, the tax does pay for the roads. Not the road, the specific... Your local thing. roads come yeah. out from your local council. Exactly. Yeah. So those, that's covered by your potholes and stuff. But road tax is things like infrastructure, smart motorways, or not so smart way, motorways. So now... I have a vision for motorways for the future. Go on, man. Sorry to interrupt your quiz. Yeah. But with all this sort of uh, car tax and road tax and everything, yeah, my vision is that motorways become sort of um, travelators, right? So you know, like in the airport, yeah, when you've got a flat escalator. I'm guessing it's called a travelator. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't. I think that's what will have roads in 50 years from now. That's the future. So you don't actually drive. Yeah, you may sit in a vehicle, but you just get moved onto this. Travelator, and it takes you down the motorway. But then you need to move away from people wanting to own stuff, don't you? Which a lot of people are doing already with... Yeah, more people are renting, renting aren't they? Yeah. You may still own a car, but you won't drive on the motorway. You'll just move oh, your car. You'll be joined into the motorway. Yeah. And it will take you 100 miles up wherever you need to go. So for longer journeys, you'll get on the, the Travelator. Yeah. And take him a Travelator up north. Yeah. Down south. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, that's just my vision. I haven't done anything about it. But how do you get to the Travelator? Well, you will drive if you've got a car that you need to drive to yeah. the junction, yeah. and then the travelator will be clever enough to join you at the safe uh, point. Uh, you may be onto something here. I think I am. Yeah. Yeah. Should all be automated the roads? Yeah. But who's Forget driving the cars? The, the roads should be automated. But how, what happens? To, that sound, this sounds like a lot like a train. No, because it doesn't stop. It just keeps going. Yeah. What if it breaks down? I mean, you're getting this. This is just in my mind. You're okay. getting all the questions yet. Yeah. But if anyone's listening who wants to make this a reality, give us a yeah. call. Let's look at uh, car tax, vehicle excise duty. Okay. So, if you bought a car that was registered before the first of March two thousand and one, yeah. The rate you pay for your tax, yeah, based on the engine size. Correct. Good. The quiz over. No, I can keep okay. going. Okay. Yeah, go on. So, yeah. but this changed. After 2001, yeah, to be applied to what it's now based on your your emissions, your CO2 on? emissions, emissions and fuel type. Okay, yeah. But uh, then from 2017, uh, the first year's payment is based on emissions, and after that, it's fuel type, and I think a bit of your emissions. But but this is what I was terrible to quiz. Ask you is about. This? this is sorry. <laughs> I'll get back to a quiz question afterwards. They also added, they, as in the Chancellor, as in the government, added an extra thing where if the car's list price yeah. was £40,000 or more, you pay an extra £320 a year yeah. in road tax or vehicle excise duty yeah. for, for five years. Let's just take a step back. Let's clarify. The first year's road tax, as we're calling it, is based on the CO2 emissions. Yeah. Okay. That's the first year. Now, that's the first year of the car's existence. Yeah. That's not the first year of your ownership, is it? So it's from when the car's registered. Yeah. So if I buy a car, I pay that first year's tax based on the CO2 emissions. Yeah. If you buy that car for me three years later, that first year's gone. You're buying it from year three onwards. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So you're so then now, now you're adding in the bit that if it's worth forty thousand pounds or more, you've yeah. got to pay an extra tax. Yeah. Yeah. What's your? You got a problem with that, don't you? Well, you've got to see. You got to look in your. I've eye. got to look because you've got to pay. Well, I'll tell you what happened to me. So we've been looking at cars. Yeah. Um, this Mitsubishi Outlander I mentioned earlier. Yeah, in Fev. A Fev. So we looked at some that were uh, registered, listed after twenty seventeen. So we were going to buy them second hand. But we would have had to, because their initial price when we first person bought them was more than forty thousand pounds. Yeah, we would still have to have paid that three hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, because it's supplied for the first five years. So even if it's sold to a second or third person, yeah, you still have to pay it. Yeah, 
that just doesn't seem very fair to me. Tell me why you don't think it's it fair. It wasn't my choice that that car was £40,000, and I'm not paying £40,000 for that car. Yeah. Why do you think they brought it in? Well, it's sort of a... It's a undercover wealth tax, really, isn't it? Yeah, it seems like they want to tax people with more expensive cars. Yeah. Is that fair? Maybe. If you can afford a more expensive car, then maybe it's fair that you pay a bit more tax on it. Yeah, it's fair on the first person, but why Why the second person who probably will be paying maybe half the price? Is it maybe also trying to get cars to be sold initially at lower prices? So I'm, maybe there are some manufacturers now who are listing their cars just under £40,000. There are some, yeah. Yeah. I think then when you want a lot of the extras, it all it all pushes it up. I don't think I don't think it's that it's that unfair. No, no. That's like an because specifically forty thousand pounds. Yeah. If you, if you can afford forty thousand pounds, then you can yeah probably afford. Is that what you're going to say? I don't know. You didn't give me a chance to finish. <laughs> I was going to say if you if you take a step back, yeah, and you think of the population of our country, forty thousand pounds is more than the uh, average salary for the for the UK. So that's a lot of money to spend on a car for your average person. Yeah. And some people spend just a few hundred pounds on a car. So then adding in what you just said before, if you can afford £40,000 on a car, an extra £300 a year tax isn't that much. Yeah. I know none of us like tax. It doesn't seem that unreasonable. Why should the next person have to pay it? I think if you don't have some sort of rule and you run a risk that someone will buy it, there'll be some sort of scam going on that you buy it and then a month later sell it. Ah. You like that, didn't you? That little noise that came out of your mouth implies you might have liked that. That was a good idea. If if you want to learn more about scams, listen to our previous episode (laughs) where we didn't mention this one, but I think Josh has just come up with a new scam. Well, no, it doesn't work. That's my point. It doesn't work. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do scams. Do you want a new quiz? New question. Sure, go on. Same quiz, new question. Okay. How much was raised from vehicle excise duty, car tax in 27, 2018? 400 million. More. Higher. 2 billion. Higher. 5 billion. Higher. 7 billion. Higher. Now I've just seen your screen. I've got the answer. 6.4 billion. Correct. So that's quite a lot of money, isn't it? So you can see why um, the government may be keen to keep it going. May not be in too much of a rush to scrap petrol and diesel cars because if you have a fully electric car not a hybrid you're exempt from having to pay road tax unless it's worth more than 40,000 unless it's worth more than 40,000 that was also another strange thing isn't it so because one of the benefits surely should be when you buy an electric car you'd think well I'm not emitting anything and the tax is based on the emissions so why am I paying if I pay more than £40,000. Well, I think it's like you said before, it's a tax on wealth, isn't it? Yeah. Also, classic cars are exempt. Yeah. That's another weird thing. That seems to contradict it being a tax on wealth. Because, I don't know, do richer people buy classic cars? Probably. Yeah. Do you remember Yeah. when you tax your car, you used have that little disc yeah. in the front of the car? Those were cute. Yeah, when did they get rid of those? Got rid of those in 2014. Is it that long ago? Yeah. So, oh, really? well, I don't, yeah, I never really understood the reason for that. I guess... It's a bit of a waste of paper because you throw it away every year because yeah. you've you got to pay every year. Some people did used to collect them and they yeah. did this massive stash in their car of the old car discs. Yeah, because so, you just put them in front and then they pile on and on and then one falls out and then yeah. you get fined. It was also, I think it was easier when you had the discs for police to spot people who hadn't taxed their cars. Yeah. Now it's got to be all computerised, all yeah. electronic. Uh, one of the unfair things about that was if your piece of paper did fall and get covered and then a policeman did see... They may think, oh, that car's not taxed and you could get... Did that happen? I I didn't, but I don't know if that... Now they're probably thinking, well, people are paying this anyway. Just because they're not displaying it, it doesn't necessarily mean they haven't paid. Don't talk to me about pay and display after my ticket a few weeks ago. Uh, Do do you want to tell me about that? I mean, it's kind of... I I went to a place where you were. Went to uh, Harrow Leisure Centre for a kid's party. Didn't realise it was a pay and display car park, so just happily went to the party. Um, got back to my car yeah. started driving off I didn't even realise and my son said to me Daddy what's that yellow thing on the windscreen 
I saw you even drove off with it on my It's a good job it wasn't raining and you yeah. had the windscreen wipers. So I uh, went and got it, was very yeah. annoyed because it was free parking anyway. Yeah. I just hadn't displayed a ticket. Oh, really? I didn't realise that. You didn't even... Oh, so you just had to get a ticket. That's annoying. Yeah, that is really annoying. Yeah. So I'm I'm appealing that on the basis of that I'm an idiot. That's an expensive party to go to, isn't it? It was you've got to buy a present and you get charged... <laughs> exactly. 40 quid or whatever it is for a ticket. So I'll let you know how that appeal goes. Can't wait to find out. Do you want to know... Do you remember a few weeks, months, months or so ago I had a parking ticket? Yeah, I thought I never you'd never tell me. You. How have you got on? Uh, I felt I got rejected. Yeah, so is you right. They said to me, <laughs> because my argument was we we parked in a market trader's bay, but with a disabled badge, yeah. and I didn't see it was a market trader's bay, and you're supposed to be able to park in any residence bay. But the council came back and said, well, as part of your disabled badge, you would have got a copy with all the exemptions. So obviously everyone carries that around with them and checks it. Yeah, I mean, you've got a guilty face. so that's, I do uh, have a guilty face. That, that's fair enough. So back to car tax and tax discs. Yeah. I think uh, the discs were quite good because they would at least remind you that you needed to pay Yes, you've renew. now got... Uh, you're, do they still send annual letters? I yeah. think they do. Well, you still get an annual vehicle tax reminder every time, just yeah. a month or so before. And what they'll tell you is when it's going to expire and your choices of payment. But another thing I found is you can't pay it your MOT isn't up to date. Yeah, you've got to make sure you've got it. You also need yeah. that for your insurance as well. Yeah, for your insurance. But I didn't... It's a good way because also there's no actual... Unless you set up your own reminder, you, there's no actual way of remember. Well, this, how do I phrase this? It's hard. It, there's no official MOT reminder that comes out every year saying you need to get your MOT done. You've got to do that all Usually yourself. the garage will get in touch. Oh, well, my garage is a bit rubbish in that case. Yeah. But they don't do that. I think I've got in my diary, I've got the one about the tax yeah. to, to make sure I do that annually. I don't know if I've got an MOT one. Often if your MOT is at a similar time as your vehicle tax and you try to do your vehicle tax, it'll come up and say, oh, you need your MOT done. Okay, I'm not saying that's a good way of remembering your MOT, but it shows you've got to remember your MOT. <laughs> yeah, fair There's enough. a prompt. And so there are um, a couple of ways of paying for your car tax yeah. online yeah. or... Um, by in a post office and on the phone, but also you can do it either at once or monthly. But what a lot of people th- I think you don't pay realize, a bit more if you do it monthly. Yeah, you pay they more. They charge you interest, yeah. don't they? But they don't really make that clear. I don't think on the form. Let's have a look because you've got. I've a got a form here. in front of me, and so you get your option one of taxing your vehicle. You can pay. Well, say for my car, I don't mind saying this. My uh, this is a petrol car, not for a um, hybrid. Uh, but so for six months, I would have to pay one hundred twenty nine pound twenty five. Or for 12 months, £235. But then they've told me, if you want to pay by direct debit, which implies, oh, this will be cheaper for you, uh, on a monthly basis, it would be £246.75 in total. Or they say £20.56 a month. So you think I'm spreading the payments. Yeah. But you're paying about £11 more. Yeah, I can see. So interestingly on your one, if you do six months, it's a hundred. In- now, one-off yeah. payment, it's 129.25. If you do your six months one-off payment on direct debit, you'll save six pounds, it's 123.38. Yeah. Your 12-month one, though, is the same, whether you do it one-off or direct debit. Best thing is do direct debit, and then you're yeah. not going to forget it. They're going to take it every year. Do that's an annual direct debit. Yeah. That's what I would recommend, if as long as you can afford it. The monthly one, yeah, you get charged interest. If you can afford to, don't do it. Yeah, yeah there's nothing on the back that tells you how much interest you're paying. It's about 10%, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it's high. Um, What you need to make sure as well, um, the tax on your car relates to the owner rather than the vehicle. Yeah. So if you've taxed your car for the next 12 months and you sell your car tomorrow, it doesn't come with 11 months worth of tax. The next person is going to have to do their own tax on it and you can reclaim back those 11 months worth of tax. Yeah. So don't forget to do that on your car. About company cars, do you know much about that? Don't ask me about company cars. Go on, ask me. What about company I told cars? you not to ask. <laughs> my last accountant, I think, cocked up a bit and told me to do my car via the company. Yeah. I ended up with a massive tax bill for the benefit and kind. Yeah. And the new accountant has sort of sorted it out and tidied it up. So I think you need to be very careful doing a company car. I think you need to speak to your accountant, make sure they understand the amount of miles you're going to do, whether there's going to be any personal driving, who's paying for the petrol, and then before deciding what's the best route to go down. Do you have the option of either buying it through the company or you just get your own car and you just claim claim for petrol and mileage. They're sort of general options, aren't they? Yeah, or don't have any don't or, have it anything to do with the company. Yeah. Just pay for it yourself. 
that more or less provides a general overview of car tax. Very useful, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to pick up my car, actually. So I'll let you know how that goes. When are you getting that now? Right now. I'm recording with Sesper Driving, but... No, I meant after. Don't, after... don't be funny with that. No, it, no. <laughs> well, it d- I mean, it obviously depends when you're listening to this podcast, but if you're listening in the week of the 17th February... Yeah. I'm going to pick it up hopefully tomorrow. Lovely. Yeah. Before we finish, I'm going to yeah. give you a quick listener update of where our listeners are coming from. The old geography stats. Yeah. Most of our listeners are listening through their ears, but the countries they're listening from... We've got a chuckle What's there. our uh, top? I hope it's UK. It's the UK, yes. Okay, and our second biggest... 76% uh... from UK, so the rest is made up of people from the United States. Yeah. A very vague attempt at an accent. Then España. Yeah. Australia. The Netherlands, um, Canada, and Ireland. Quite a lot in Ukraine. We're doing well. We're massive in massive Ukraine. In Ukraine. Uh, what, uh, any, what's the most random, uh, the most random or most well, remote place we've got someone listening? Don't really, the Philippines, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Gambia. Useful stuff that for, so for I went to Have you ever been to Malta? Lovely. I have been there Malta. Once, Hello yeah. to our Maltese listeners. Yeah. Malti- our Maltesers. Yeah. Yeah. Pop- did you go to the Popeye village? I don't know where I went. I was you, in Malta. Sure you know. No, in that case, no. Thailand. You got, we got one in Qatar, you said. Someone's listening in Qatar. Probably someone building the stadiums for the World Cup. Yeah. So if you're. Is that this year, the World Cup? Yeah, that's in 2022. This Correct. year is for Euros. Just testing you there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you for listening, wherever you are. Gracias. Don't forget to pass the pod. And do keep listening. I'm going to say listening one more time. Thank you for listening. Do you want to say anything to our listeners? Goodbye. Goodbye for now. Please remember, anything discussed in this programme should not be viewed as financial advice. But if you do need support, please contact me at mark, M-A-R-C, at cavendishcontent.com or visit the Orchard Practice website at www.topfs.co.uk You can also find us on Twitter at InForAPennyPod1 at Mark Schoffman and at Josh Gersler If you'd like to leave us feedback there's a link in the show notes telling you how to do that We really appreciate any comments you provide And do post any financial issues you'd like us to cover Thank you for being In For A Penny <laughs>